Welcome to Prospect Hill Forge. This is a demonstration of interactive, live, online blacksmithing classes. Let's see if we can make this thing go. All right, so Bruce, you're my one student today. The object of the game, as far as making a thing, is going to be a J-hook of some reasonable size. I'm working in 3 eighths, and uh, Bruce, I believe you're working in 3 eighths. Round, yes? yes. Awesome. Yes. Uh, I can demonstrate in clay just very briefly. I gotta make some long stuff first. So that's, uh, all right, this, this is motion sickness time. Watch it. So I'm coming in. And uh, so for clay, I gotta make round stock. And that's knocking the corners off this square bit. And then rolling it until it's round. I wish I could do this with steel. Anyway, round stuff. And our first move is going to be to taper it. And actually, you know what? I can show you even better if I come on. There's the, there's the thing. Do it. First person. So I'm gonna hammer in like this. I'll get a point. Da, 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 da. Note, these hammer blows do not work on steel. But if I hit clay like I hit steel, that's bad too. So I've got square cross section. I'm gonna knock those corners in because presumably you're gonna hang something nice on here and having sharp edges on a hook is bad. So this would be a technique I call auto rounding. And then, okay, motion sickness time again. And that'll be uh, here. I'm gonna. Oh, there's the rotation. Okay, I want to seed the curl over the edge. And then I'll hammer straight in and curl it up, something like that. And then working over the horn, having heated this up and cooling that off, I'll be able to hammer it down and around and then back up and over until I have achieved something fairly hook-like. We'll do a cut. Oh, okay. All right. And then um, mm -hmm, that should do it. Yep, yep, yeah, there we go. And then a flattening. And then, oh, oh, that hurts. Sorry about that. I left a piece of my apparatus in the way of my head. And then we will uh, punch, ideally from the back, because it leaves a hump. Driving in, turn it over, pop that out. The slug will come out, and we'll have a hole and the ability to screw the piece to a wall and hang something good on it. So that's where we're headed. Okay. And I have decently hot metal. I want a decently heavy hammer. This one is about two and a half pounds. That should work out nicely. So drawing out, I'm gonna hammer on one side until it goes to roughly twice as wide as it is tall, about a two to one ratio. And then turn it 90 degrees and hammer on the other side. There are those who will hammer bang, bang, you know, bang, 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 bang. And um, I mean, if you're accurate, great. If you're really good at turning exactly 90 degrees, awesome. But if you're not, and it's not something that's on in the beginning for a student. All right, I'm gonna be able to do this without getting any so, Decently hot metal. That's about where I want to have it. So I'm going to hammer here till it's about twice as wide at the end. Turn, hammer in the other direction, swing on the hammer for real. Oops, I've overshot. So I have to be very careful to keep that balanced because I screwed it down to a point. Unless you're working a formula that you know from having done the piece many, many times, always work the very tip first. You can always make a taper longer. 
it's hard to make a taper shorter. Technically, it's possible. Boy, is it a pain in the butt. That metal is cold, so it's going back in. So I'm gonna, uh, so I'm gonna go for a longer shot so you can see more of what's happening, what the physical mechanics are. There we go. So pulling it down, getting a 90 degree swing to get some serious oomph on the material. And now I can work out to that tip and I don't need to hit it really, really hard out of the tip. I'll just squish it into the foil and that's no good. So, and what I've achieved is, where's my camera? There it is. Um, square, it's got corners and that's all fine and dandy if I want corners, but I don't. I want a, a conic taper on this, but first you gotta go square. Having made it square, now I can knock the corners in. I'm gonna hold it on the diagonal and hit it for real. And then you pop out towards the tip. And yeah, I want you to see this from the side. So, ah, there, yeah. So put a ridge up, hammer there, and take it down. There. All right, I've switched my grip up to a pinch grip instead of the fist grip. And I'm doing a technique I call auto rounding, where, like if this were the piece, when I'm hitting on a corner, the pounds per square inch is huge and it smushes down in. But as I turn it a little bit and I get onto a flatter piece, not as much happens. I'm hitting with relatively light blows, but lots of them. And just, Turning it a little bit, making a facet, turn it a little bit, make a facet, turn it a little bit, make a facet, etc. All the way down as many times, uh, as many faces I can do. Going roundy, roundy, but yeah. There you go. And that, let's see, can we make it so that the camera really picks it up? Yes. Uh, I think so. There. All right. Um, no, focus here, there we go. So fairly smooth and it's got facets running the long way. If you go hammer bang, round and rotating like this, rounding this way, um, you end up with a kind of random surface. And well, I don't think this is good. I am now swapping to a more smithly hammer for this job, a small one. It's, it's only a little bigger than my finger. And that will let me do this tip. Oh, yeah, I know. Okay, a couple minutes. So, let's me do this tip. Just barely getting it set over. So I've seeded, uh, come on, there you are. Seeded the bend, it'll rewarm because it's getting cold because I'm talking. And I can drive straight in on it, brisk shots. If I rest it in here, it doesn't dance around as much. There we go. And I got my little curl on the end, isn't that pretty? Oh, let's see, come on, we can do this. Get a focus, no, 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 There it is, there's the focus there, it's burning the hammer. Okay, okay. Cool. Do that. Yeah. Oh, sweet. I'll do that. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Hopefully, you don't flatten it too much at once. Actually, can you show me that in the camera? Let me close. All right. And rotate a little. All right. Lift up just a hair. There you go. Okay. Yeah, looking pretty good. Okay, so you see how it's got a wide side and a narrow side? Yeah. You're going to hit the narrow side next. Okay. Warm it up. Do it again. Okay. Not unreasonable. You can, as you do the rounding, you can get that tip a little pointier. Okay. It'll, a pointier tip will curl better. Okay, so that was the corners. 
Yeah. Okay. So now if you can see them, anywhere you can see a ridge, hit that. Okay, cool. And the hammer goes to the ground. Yeah, uh, I've, I've had that happen. Um, yeah. Sweet. Nice. Okay, we can work with that. But uh, your okay. next move is to curl the very end. Okay. And, and then, then hammer straight back in with, ideally, with a very light hammer. Because you don't want something that outmasses the actual work. This little one, or I may have something lighter. If, if you've got something lighter, awesome. For lighter, I end up in a claw hammer. Um, yeah, okay. At some point, you'll make a lighter hammer. Either of those will work. Okay. Cool. But yeah, it's very light, snappy hit. First, you're going to bend a, just the tiniest bit over the edge. All right, so what you got? Let's see. Uh, and the thing is in the way. Yeah, that's a curl on the end of a tapered bar. Cool. So now I've got this thing hot. I'm going to do um, a bend over the horn. Oh, actually, you've got bending use. I know it because you sent me a picture. So um, there we go. Uh, that part of the work was hot. Yeah. Okay, you got that. <laughs> you got the device to, to put it in? Telling to put the U in, yes. Yeah, excellent. Okay, cool. So I'm gonna do the uh, put it in a vice thing, and that would be over here. That's one way to ease the motion sickness. All right, to there, and one bending you standing up. Hmm. Actually, I'm going to turn the camera up so I have a clear passage under this. All right. Decently hot. Now, I've got this curl on the end that I don't want to mash. So I'm going to give it a quick dip in the water. Actually, I've got water right here. I can do it there. Okay, cool. So hot iron, rest on the side, tip down in a little bit, cooling off just the tip. And then I can stick it in here, catching right at that uh, lip. And actually, this is probably a better view of what I'm doing. So, all right, this is kind of getting away from me as far as shape goes. But the beauty of this stuff is you can unbend it to some degree. Uh, degree, see what I did there? And actually, okay, good. I'm not unhappy with that as a hook. That'll hold a bunch of stuff. All right, more friction in that joint. There, return. Um, but I'll take that as a hook. I have the option of tightening that down and smoothing that curve just a hair and knocking that into line. And that's a fairly happy thing. Yeah, I'll take that as a hook. There it is. Yeah, one hook. Now, into the fire to heat along in here. Da -da -da, along in here, so that I don't have a great long hook, and then I can cut it there. So I'm set up with a cutting hardy in the hardy hole. Mm -hmm. If you have a sharp corner on your anvil, you can do a cut there, but be very careful not to drive all the way through and ding your anvil because you want to maintain that. This is a replaceable sharp edge. So I still need to bend. So. Oh, okay. All right. So I will watch you bend if I can. All right. Well, can I see your finished bending piece? The 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 bent piece. Yes. Oh, so I can figure out. Uh, looks ah, like that. Okay. 
So the curl to the outside. So you're going to bend away from the curl. That's fairly hook like. Actually, you I want to do a thing. I'm going to use a setup here that lets me really point to your work. And now I can see your piece right there. And can you see on my screen what I'm pointing to? Yes? Yes. Yes. So this part right here, there we go. This part would like a little bit better bend. Okay. So you're going to heat this area up, quench just the curl, and then you'll catch like the very tip of the curl here against one side of the, the bending U, and that should okay. put the other side of the bending U somewhere in here, and that should give you some bend right in this area here. Making sense? Yep. We'll find out. Yep. Well, heat it up. All right. Oh, that's already looking better. That looks more intentional. <laughs> okay. That's a lot of what we want. Okay, so uh, let's see, I was gonna, I was setting up for doing a hot cut. Yep. We need a fairly hefty hammer. And actually for this, I wanna do a round cut. So I'm not just gonna put it on here and clobber and clobber and clobber until it comes apart. I'm gonna hit it and turn it and hit it and turn it and hit it and turn it and hit it like this round and around, so it ends up with a line around it, kind of like uh, as if a beaver were going after it. And then uh, that will give me okay. a nicer end piece. There, okay, decent heat. And then I've got clearance for the hook to flip around there, so that's good. Yeah, this will work out. All right, so mark, turning it a little, marking it, turning it a little. All right, as I get, actually, you know what? I'm gonna turn this over. Right. Uh, yeah. So as I turn it over, see how I can see, and you can see that V that's coming up and over the cut mark. See how I'm aiming yep. it at the edge. So my view of straight down on it, I want to see that lining up like it's going to actually uh, connect. So that's what I'm up to. And then I'm coming back to here. Yeah. And boy, is this cold. All right, just a minute. Too much talk, not enough do. Okay, so continuing around. There's my mark. It's connected around. And now I'm going to rotate until it's almost off. Okay, let's see this. Uh, yeah, almost off. And with that, I can now grab and bend, and bend, and give it a twist. Severed steel. Okay, but I want to get the end hot. And what I'm going to do, take the cutting hardy out. I'm going to be working over here. There it is. So I'm going to be working here at the edge of the anvil. I'm going to set the piece on, and I'm going to deliver a half face blow. Half the hammer on, half the hammer off. I'm going to do it with the hook facing down. And this is going to produce a shoulder right there. Can we see this? Yeah, sort of. There it is. Ah, uh, shadows. OK. So I'm hitting in such a way that should give me, yeah, a bit of a shoulder by hammering half on and half off. I'm tilting this way a little bit from dead vertical so that I get a good bite so I get a distinct shoulder. And I only want to flatten this down to about half the original thickness. If you're going to punch a hole in something, you don't want to get it too, too thin. It makes life way more difficult unless you're using like a, a cold mechanical punch. Oh, almost hot. Hammer ready. And 
a little bit more. Careful to make sure I'm on that shoulder and then I can come down and tap that down into flatness and a little bit of straightness. I was a little happier. Okay, so I've got my piece. There we go. Where's my camera? There it is. So, okay. I've got a shoulder. It's that way to the hook so that when I screw it to the wall, it'll be good. And now I need a hole in there. And ideally, I would be doing that from the back. That's a tough one. Doing that first might have been the good plan. <laughs> Because it would have been a little bit easier to hold down a little bit. Um, now, okay, so I'm going to use the chain hold down. I'm going to put the piece under. I'm going to punch from the front. Not my preferred situation, but it will work. And I'm going to work with, yeah, all right. Punch like this has a, uh, there it is, flat end. This is about 3 sixteenths or so across. Let's turn off my blower because my metal's hot, but I'm not ready. So there's my, yeah, that's a nice flat end. Okay. I'm putting it in one of my holders here. Um, if you have one, great. If you're going to use a glove, uh, great. I always find it a little bit scary to be holding a short punch over something hot and then swinging my hammer at the whole mess because, well, that hurts on both sides. You know, hammer on one side, hot on the other. Um, having some kind of holder, uh, perhaps even a pair of tool holding tongs like this with a latch on the other end is really nice. Um, and, a, and a more <clears throat> traditional Smithly sort of answer to the question. What I gotta do is, let's see, I'm gonna punch this. No, nope. I'm gonna hold it. I'm not gonna use the chain. I'm gonna try to use, oh, this would be entertaining. I'm gonna do it from uh, a shot from a greater distance so you can see what I'm doing, yeah. I'm gonna hold it in tongs, I'm gonna to hold the tongs between my legs, hold that piece on there and then I'll be able to punch from the back and I will tighten this up. Come on, tighten. There we go. All right, so I got that. And I have some coolant for my punch. That'll be nice. Okay. Just okay. making sense. questions, comments, wonderments, issues, observations, worries, complaints. No, um, with what I have for tools, I'm using a pair of pliers, and I forgot coolant for ah. the punch tip. Oh. Um, yeah, you if you can part way through, you'll probably want to cool off your punch. You do want to take it out. Yeah, you'll hit it like three times and take it out and do it again. Okay, I'll see if I can demonstrate this. All right. So, let me tin can yep. a water down. Piece. Make some room in my apron. Hook that. Yeah, okay, cool, got it. Center the punch on the back of the piece and hit it. The first hit needs to be very, very decisive. Tap the work when you're taking the punch out. And. All right, so what just happened there, I don't know how much of this you can see. It went dark in the middle, yep. while it was still kind of glowy around the outside. And that's my sign that I have gotten to where I've got a shiny spot. Yep. Can you see this? Yeah, shiny circle. Yep. That's my guide for placing the punch on top. All right, so that was the position holding it with tongs. Get this over here. And let's see how close we can get to this punching operation. Yeah. 
All right. That'll do. All right, I'm going to rewarm this just a little bit, but I don't actually want it very hot for this move. Oop, turn the blower on. That'll work. Even better. Um, if I try to do this really, really hot, when I punch from the, the other side of the hole, that little bit of a slug, if it's really hot, we'll just go to the other side, forge out, fill the hole, grip the sides, and not come out. It's very frustrating. You can move a slug from one side of the hole to the other, up and down, over and over, for six or seven heats, if you really do it um, wrong. Uh, let's see, that's, that's my spot to do it. Yeah, I want to do it right about here. Okay. Um, so, but if you let it cool some, all right, this is too hot and that's fine. So this is too bright. <laughs> uh, I, I want to let it get down to uh, kind of a dark red. I'm shifting this in the tongue so that my legs will hold the tongs shut. There we go. So it's getting darker. I'm finally just about down to the temperature I want. It's called a shearing heat. And I want to be right on top of my mark and solid hit. And, and that should be, there's a hole. One hole. Okay. Um, ideally, that all happens in the one heat. You go bam, 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 bam. Take the you know, well, bam, bam, bam. Take the punch out, cool it, put it back in. Bam, bam, bam. Till it goes black in the bottom, because that's you've got your, your metal thin and pressed against the cold, cold anvil. And then you turn it over, find your spot, center it, put the punch on it. Yeah, put the punch on it, center it. Let it get to dark, dark red, and then give it one or two good hits, and that should take the slug out. Sometimes you have to go over the Pritchell hole to really knock it out, but that's not how it's supposed to go. And there, <laughs> the finished hook. Need some right. wire brushing, and uh, we're good. All right. Well, we start with a cut once it's hot. Ah, yes, right. I ran through that. <laughs> For the height of my hardy, I got to turn it sideways. Oh, yeah. Can you see my anvil? Yes, I can. Yeah, it's very short, hardy. Okay. Um, yeah, you can work with that. You can, you'll only rotate so far, and that's okay. Well, like this, I can go all the way around. Oh, okay. This way, I wouldn't be able to. Hmm. Fair enough. The other way would might be to stand it up in a vise, but yeah. And now, uh, doing that shoulder, this is one of the tricky bits. Now, in putting the shoulder, am I doing it with the curve facing up or down? With the, the hook will be facing down. Let's like that. So, yeah, you'll be holding it in this position to set it on the anvil and make that shoulder that is just so is it wonderfully visible. There we go. Helps make it look intentional. All about intentional. Say about half thickness. Yeah, about. Now, I see you working way out on the heel. Is that because that's where you have your sharpest corner? Correct. Uh-huh. Um, like here, there's no, no corner here. Nothing. It's really, really ratty. Yeah, uh, a little bit here. Yeah. Rounded is nice, actually. So. Is that showing up? Uh, let's see. Oh, yeah, that works. Nice, and you held it on, on well and solidly. You're pretty much ready to punch. Ah, yes. All right. <laughs> Woohoo! 
Well, that was exciting. Um, <laughs> but I have a very nice dent in it. All right. From where I was, yeah, bring it close, bring it close, even closer. All right, yeah, decent. From where I'm standing, it looked like you had the punch held at an angle and not dead vertical. Possibly. Yeah, um, that's going to cut down on your efficiency. You want to deliver your force perpendicular to the resistance as much as possible. Okay. And just drop them. Yeah. Long hammer. Yeah. Almost. All right. So we got a forge. <laughs> Right there. Must have done something wrong. No. I almost have I almost have a hole. <laughs> it is seventy five percent. Okay. Yeah. It, yeah, your alignment wasn't spot on. So, yeah, you may end up having to punch back and forth a couple of times. Something like that. That is the end of a tunnel, and hopefully it's not an oncoming train. There you go. Get over there. This is not going to work. Yeah, you're coming in at a serious angle. Yeah, I know. And it's cold. Yeah. I don't know if I feel like going to trees. Mm. Well, you're the taller one. Yep. Okay. Yeah, that Mm. Yeah. It go. Thank you. There we go. And we're done. Awesome. We pull. We have a hole. All right. This is going to sound funny, but show me your hole. Beautiful. Nicely centered, too. Good job. Thank you. All right. So, you've made a hook. I think we've done what we came to do. Awesome.